He's so nervous. <laughs> I didn't mess up the intro with you. It's going to be good. All right. Welcome to our second episode in our new series, This Is My Story. If you guys are just joining us, we want to say welcome. Go ahead and jump in the chat. And what what should they type in the chat? They're uh, excited. How about testify? Testify. Testify Come tonight. on. Type testify in the chat wherever you're streaming from, on our online platform, on Facebook. And if you're on YouTube, you can do that too. Um, but you're probably watching on your TV. But hey, we're excited to be with you all tonight. Yeah. Uh, and Jenny, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. How are you, JD? I'm doing all right. I'm are you ready right. to be in the hot seat? Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to see. That's right. So last week, JD interviewed me. Yes. We talked about my sin struggles with body image, eating disorders. So if you missed it and you want to catch up, you can still watch it on demand, correct? Yes, you can. And tonight, we're going to talk to JD about the things that he struggled with and where the Lord has brought him from yes. and to in this present season. So you're ready to get started? All right. Let's just, let's let's just jump, jump in. Jump in. Before I, before I chicken that out. Mandate off. <laughs> before I chicken out and just leave. That's right. So, <laughs> JD. What brought you to Liberty? Okay. What do you do here? Tell us a little bit about your backstory. So, what brought me to Liberty? I mean, I'm nervous off the first question. <laughs> what <laughs> brought the easy question? I know. I know, I know this, right? this is the layup one. Um, what brought me to Liberty was um, so in co when I graduated college, um, my dad and I were going to a funeral, and it happened to be at Liberty. Um, he, he had actually moved here while I was in college, so I really wasn't familiar with this area too much, um, actually at all. So, because okay. I grew up in Northern Virginia, right outside of uh, D.C. and Alexandria, and so this area was completely new. We happened to be here for a funeral, and I saw Lorenzo uh, singing. Lorenzo is a worship leader that used to work here, um, and we were friends in college and everything. We worked in similar ministries, and I was like, yo, that's, that's my buddy Lorenzo. So hey. after the service, we, uh, we ended up chopping it up, grabbing lunch, and he told me to visit um, on a Sunday and I was looking at you know volunteering in different churches in the area I just graduated in comms and stuff and so I visited I met I met a couple guys that worked here and they told me to come back and volunteer I think I volunteered two Sundays and then I was gone I took an internship um, up in Fredericksburg and I was in like I was locked into like a year-long internship for graphics and um, so three months into this internship I get a call um, and it's JB Bowling who used to work here also he calls me and he goes hey listen uh, we got a job for you and God told us that you're our guy. And I was like, huh. no, man, like that's, that's impossible. Um, I didn't even know you guys were hiring, seriously. But uh, I was like, no, nah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good where I'm at, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm only three months into a year long internship. I don't oh, really, wow. I don't feel like it's my time to leave yet, you know. And he was like, well, just talk to them about it, see, see what they say. And I was like, I mean, I'll talk to them, you know. So I talked to the, to the head pastor and he ended up saying, hey, I, I've heard of Liberty, it's a good church. I think you should, uh, think you should make that move. And I was like, oh, okay. I was surprised he, he said that. Um, and so I ended up, uh, I mean, really, that's that's when I that's when I came out to Liberty uh, and I got hired as a videographer and graphic designer um, and then got promoted to lead the online cameras about like, wow, it's been like, what, three and a half years ago now. Wow. Um, so I've been here for a total of uh, six years. Nice. Yes. So nice. it's it's been some time. So y'all are used to seeing JD Sunday mornings, yes. pre-service, 9, 1045 a.m. 
Yes, ma'am. And you do a ton of other stuff throughout the week, too, just to minister to that online community. So you kind of hold that online community together yeah, as their leader right it's been it's been good it's been it's been a huge learning experience you know launching a ministry from scratch is a lot of work yeah. um but it's been really it's been really good a lot of a lot of awesome stories a lot of connection points i mean it's just neat how um how many people we do reach in a week basis um we just did a stat video the other day and we're like i always say we're in over 20 countries but we were in 42 countries in the last two months wow and if you look at a year scale i mean it goes up to like around 100 countries um and some of these countries only, you know, they view maybe once or twice um, a year. But, I mean, just that impact and just the opportunity to be in these countries that we normally wouldn't, you know, just cruise on over to. Right. Um, you know, we're talking we're talking countries that are hostile to the gospel. Um, and so when you think about the magnitude of that, you think about the severity and the seriousness of what what an opportunity we have, it really does kind of motivate you yeah. to continue um, in the mission. Yeah. Well, I know we're so thankful to have you here at Liberty. If you at home, wherever you're watching from, are thankful for J.D., just say thanks JD in the chat I know he'd love it send him some love so JD why don't you tell us a little bit about what your sin struggle is and just a little background information about your family like growing up how right. did that play into it I know a lot at least for me personally a lot of those things start when you're young yeah. and a lot of your life experiences so why don't you start there so to start from, I use this with you, the origin story, just because uh -huh. I'm a Marvel fan, you know, superhero. They always like talk about an origin story. Mm -hmm. So um, the origin story, for, so really, let's talk about the sin struggle for me we're going to discuss today uh, is anger, um, anger and dealing with anger. Um, and that could be anger, anger with God. If you find yourself at home, you're like, well, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. It means you could become angry with God and you now you start to do things because you're angry with God and you start to turn away. You could be angry with people. I mean, it could be a lot of different things. It can manifest in different ways. But I'm going to discuss um, anger and, and, you know, how it relates to me and, and my sin struggles. Uh, so I, uh, my origin story really where I began, I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, my parents were always in the church. So there was never... There was never a point where I didn't know who Jesus was. Okay. I always knew who God was. I knew the things of God. Man, I, I remember like quoting scriptures um, in front of the church when I was young. I mean, they, they started us, me and my sister, off young. Um, but for me, I started off in California. So I was born in San Bernardino, California, SoCal. Um, <laughs> and I was actually adopted. So a lot of people don't know this, but um, we we're, were getting deep today, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Um, so... I was adopted. Um, my birth mother um, was actually, uh, she, she had me and then she just, you know, she just dipped out. Mm -hmm. um, and so birth father, nowhere to be seen. Um, he signed some paperwork and he dipped out too. And so I was adopted around the age of two. Um, and then after I was adopted, um, I was in the hospital because um, the foster care system was so bad. Um, you know, I, I developed, um, I already had asthma, I just developed my asthma even worse. I had an eating disorder. Um, you know, when they, like they, when, when you're in foster care, like you don't necessarily get taken care of. I mean, that's a whole nother issue that uh, we don't have time to discuss today. But, um, you know, the foster care system is a very broken system. And so when you're a baby, you don't necessarily get the nutrients. You don't get somebody caring for you when you're crying. Like, like um, when my family came to the foster home, um, they said, my, they said my sister found me and just pointed and was like, I want that one. And I was Aww. like a dirty baby crying underneath a bed. Um, like nobody's like around. Um, like they fed me like hot dogs and they just like my system was jacked up. They actually mm -hmm. thought I was gonna die. Um, and you were two. Yes. At that point. After after I was even adopted. Um and it was crazy time because my family was about to my dad was in the military. I'm a military brat. Um, go army. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, you know, he had orders to roll out and so the getting me out of the hospital, I mean all that was such a tight turnaround for them. Um and it was really a God thing. Um but so that's kinda like my origin story. Grew up in a Christian home. And really my, I think anger, it's sometimes there's not a point in which you can be like, this is where I started being angry because right. it kind of just like, it slowly seeps into you and it becomes a poison yeah. um, in your mind. And so growing up, I had a lot of, uh, I mean, I just, I was just an angry, I was an angry kid. Mm -hmm. I was angry at life. I was angry at God. I knew who God was and I just couldn't understand why certain things happened in my life. Um, so as a young kid, I struggled with identity. Um, I struggled with who I was, um, you know, and, and I mean, it really wasn't just who I was. It was why did God allow me 
to feel like I didn't belong. So when you're adopted, I mean, you, a lot of people struggle with different things when you're adopted. You, you could struggle with belonging to your family. You could struggle with the way that, you know, your, your birth parents didn't love you. Um, and I had a closed adoption, so I didn't even know what they looked like. So I used to have dreams that my birth mom was going to come and save me one day. Um, because I was a bad kid. So when you're, you know, when you're bad, like you get whooped, you know what I'm saying? And so like, I would always attribute that to me being adopted. Like, oh, I'm getting in trouble because of this. And so I acted out in anger even more. And so it was kind of just like a multiplication effect. Um, and it also made me feel like, I remember like my parents would have like movie nights and my sister would be like, they'd all be um, watching a movie and I'd be feeling like all alone and secluded and it would just like hurt. But it wasn't because I was adopted at that. And like, it was really because I was just, I was, I was acting up and that was my right. punishment, but it, I internalized those things and I really, and it really stuck with me. Um, and then, you know, growing up, knowing certain things, it affects your self-esteem. Um, so like my birth mother was a prostitute. And so knowing that, um, and I'm also, you know, I had drugs in my system, um, you know, crack baby, different drugs, all those things affect you. And so knowing those things, I started to tell myself I wasn't worth a lot. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like, um, you know, it just made me feel like I wasn't good enough. I was never going to be smart enough. Um, you know, and when you do, when you are born with drugs in your system, a lot of times you have mental disabilities or you have, um, just different things that can affect you, lack of trust and things. And especially like when you're a baby and you grow up in foster care and you don't have somebody to like hold you when you cry, like that, right. even that affects your amount of trust in relationships. So just like with that, like I just had to deal with so many issues internally that I wasn't ready for. And it really made me angry at like my family, my parents. And, and, and really it was God that I was really mad about. Um, and so I used to act out. I mean, I used to act out in anger. I, I was mad at everybody. Um, and I just had a lot of hate in my heart. And so for me, I mean, I just grew up fighting. Um, I was in school, I was getting suspended like three times a year in every school I was at. Um, wow. But what really the, I mean, it was, it was kind of a blessing. We used to move every two years. So if you get suspended a certain amount of times, they kick you out of the school district, right? Like they can only put up with so much. And so right. we used to move every two years. So my parents would always be like, hey, this is a fresh start. Yeah this is a fresh start for you. And so, um, you know, and every time I just, I'd screw it up. Um, I had so much anger. I couldn't even see clear. Um, a lot of times and I was ready for, uh, I, I mean, you know, I was ready for somebody to say something. So, you know, growing up, I was short. Um, I actually had an eating disorder where my parents helped me get out of it, but I used to be like super chubby when I was really, really young. Um, it was like a coping mechanism, honestly. Mm -hmm. And, um, so dealing with like getting bullied and stuff, I mean, I reacted, um, and so, but I, I kind of overreacted in a sense. Um, but when you get bullied for years, you know, you're going to, there's a point where you can only take so much. And right. so I hit that threshold really, really fast. Um, and so, you know, I would be, you know, um, in school, just like throwing chairs, like fighting, cussing teachers out, just going crazy. It got to a point where, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Scared Straight program, but they put me in the Scared Straight program um, when I lived in upstate New York, when we were stationed there. Um, I believe my dad was deployed at the time and my mom was just like, yo, kind of at her wits end. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that was like, that was one of the breaking, breaking down points for me, um, was just seeing my mother cry, knowing that like, this is, uh, you know, this is an exact cause of what, what I've been doing. And, you know, and they explain to you, I mean, they try to scare the life out of you. And I was, you know, I'm not even gonna lie. Like I was, I was shit. I mean, there's guys in there telling you they're going to rape you. They're going to mm -hmm. kill you. They take your shoes. I mean, there is no holds barred. Like, they did the whole, like, search down, pat down, hands on the wall, arrested, sitting in the cell, that whole nine. And, um, you know, it was like one of those wake up moments for me. And so uh, I got saved. Um, so fast forward. Um, that was around middle school, early middle school, um, probably like sixth or seventh grade ish. Um, so I moved from upstate New York to Northern Virginia in eighth grade. And, um, I gave my life to Christ um, going into my freshman year of high school. We were at a summer camp called Snowbird. And like you, Jenny, really a lot of a lot of our stories, maybe even your story, um, a lot of the testimony aspects starts after you got saved. Right. Because that's when that conscience, that's when that Holy Spirit gets in you and you really start to think about the things you're doing and you're starting to feel the guilt for what you do. Right. And a lot of that can be attributed really to the Holy Spirit being inside of you. You can't get away with things and just do things without right. feeling that conviction. Um, and just think about Jesus, like his temptation in the wilderness was right before his ministry really started exactly so right before your ministry really starts and you can tell your story share your story with others and encourage them that's when the enemy comes knocking at that door right that's real that's real and so um and just like you like when i was going through my sin struggle i was in the church right. and i was active in the church right um i was i was 
I've always kind of been active in the church. My parents were like teaching in the church. I mean, I had a good example, (laughs) you know, looking back um, when I was young, young, I used to blame my parents, but I wasn't, I didn't know what I was blaming them for. I was really blaming them just for all the inner turmoil that I was feeling and feeling less than, but that was not, that had nothing to do with them. I just didn't know where to point that anger at. And so even in high school, I was angry at my parents and, but and it wasn't until college where I really was just like, wow, that wasn't my parents. That was really just a me thing. Um, and it was internal wow. things that I had to struggle with. So I had to go back and apologize to my parents um, for the way that I acted. Um, and I don't know how they did it. You wow, know, looking awesome. looking back, we've had some, we've had some crazy moments that I'm not going to open up. <laughs> but I mean, there was a point where like, you know, I told my dad I hate him and I was going to kill him. I mean, there was a lot of anger inside. And um, I don't know how I would deal with that if my future son does that to me, right. you know. I mean, God was definitely uh, still present, um, even in the midst of it. So in high school, you know, there were some definite lows because I knew what I was doing was wrong. I was acting out because I was so angry at the world that I mm-hmm. felt like I didn't care about the results of what happened to my life. So, um, you know, growing up in Northern Virginia, you know, you're 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 around certain environments and violence and drugs and such. And so my personality type, you mentioned like you kind of have an addictive personality. I'm very similar to that. So I ran to the things that I shouldn't be running to as an outlet. Um, I was running to the violence, into the anger, like the anger crowd and all those things. And some of those things really took my walk for a good check and a turn because like I'm in the midst of situations and I'm just thinking like, look, this isn't me. Like I I'm like helping lead on Wednesday nights and like I'm about to and like we were in the midst of doing just some crazy stuff on the like earlier before church starts. And I'm just like God was like completely like in me and I just couldn't shake it. Mm-hmm. And so I fought that feeling throughout my high school years. i um, pretty sure you've heard pastors mentioned before, like living um, dual lives, like in high school, like that was definitely me. Like I was in church, knew the things of God, but I was fighting it outside of it. And it wasn't necessarily to be cool. It was really because it was out of desperation for identity for myself because I found my identity in who I was around mm-hmm. um, and in acting out in things that I shouldn't have been acting out in. Um, and so, I mean, there's, there's stories for days, but we're going to, we're going to keep it abbreviated. But, um, I mean, so let's fast forward. So high school was, was one big struggle. My senior year, um, was really when I started to think about my future. Mm -hmm. When you're in high school, you're not necessarily thinking about college, your freshman year of high school. Um, however, my dad always told me you're either going to college, you're going to be homeless, you Mm -hmm. know? So there wasn't a lot of options there. there. Yeah. (laughs) And I was a wrestler and I mean, I always loved sports. And so wrestling really, uh, (laughs) my wrestling coach was really one of the people that I'd say helped save my life in a sense. When I say that, I, I, I I really mean that. I mean, I was going down some dark roads, a lot of anger inside of me, um, that would have put me in situations where I might not have freedom. Let's just say, Mm -hmm. um, every day I might be locked up. Um, Mm -hmm. but I mean, there was a point where I remember one of my teachers caught me high in class and like we had like um, just bottles on us and just a lot of stuff going on. And he took me outside. He's like, look, man, you're about to get kicked out of this school. And this is high school. Like this isn't middle school. This isn't elementary school. This is high school. Like your life will be altered forever. Um, And he was like, I know you're not going to listen to anybody. So I'm going to turn you over to your coach. Now, my coach was um, it was Roy Hill. So he. Roy Hill, like, he's, he's like a dad to a lot of wrestlers, like, back in the day. Like, he's, I mean, even to this day, he got coach of the year. I mean, he's, he's an amazing man. And so, um, and it was somebody that I didn't want to disappoint. Right. You know, in high school, I didn't want to disappoint my parents. But, like, you know, your parents, you know, you're going to listen to them, but only to a certain extent, just because mm-hmm. that's just the nature of it. Right. And, and so it wasn't that they had, like, he had more authority in my life than my parents at all. But it was just, like, I just saw him in a different way. And he could talk to, like, he could just, like, yell at me and I'd just be, like, broken down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I just remember the specific day in high school, um, my senior year, and he just grabbed me by my, he was a big, big black man. So he grabbed me by my shoulders and he was just like, is this what you want to do with your life? Do you want to throw your whole life away? And then he just started listing kids that got locked up before me that oh, I wow. knew about. Like, you know, like, we were seeing people get left and right, like, get caught up in situations. And he's like, you're one step away from that. Is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? Um, and I had, you know, I was a decent wrestler, so I had potential to wrestle in college. And he was like, you like, like, you don't have to throw your life away. Um, and so, I mean, that conversation shook me and, um, I started tightening up. I mean, and I saw, I saw potential in my life for the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, and I saw my identity, not in my surroundings. And I, and, and, and it felt like I finally could 
choose something and I could actually be good at it. And so I poured my heart into wrestling my senior year, placed all state, you know, went to all these different tournaments, nationals. We used to wrestle year round. So like, you know, we used to fly out to different areas and whatnot. But I mean, God really used wrestling and my coach um, alongside my parents and my youth pastor um, to really shape me. And looking back is when I could finally see it all. Yeah. When I'm in the midst of these different situations and fighting it and living a dual life, I couldn't see a full picture of how God was still using people, even when I didn't yeah. know he was using them. You never can when you're in You never it. can. Like, yeah. my youth pastor was a rock in my life. I mean, Kenneth Peacock, to this day, um, I mean, he's just, he was a, he's always been a man of God, but he was so relatable that, like, God used him specifically. And looking back, it was like, wow, like, I was really a mess, and he knew it, and he never judged me. Wow. You know, it's so That's refreshing awesome. when you think about people in your life. Um, it makes you want to call them up and thank them, like for real, because you should. there was, yeah, I know, I know there was moments when I, when I would just like confess to him and I'm like, look, uh, the ability to confess to somebody without judgment was such freedom. Kind of like how you were saying, yeah, like so you can't keep everything in the dark. So the ability to tell somebody to tell your dirtiest, darkest sins to, and him not judge you and pray for you and still like allow you to lead and do certain things. I mean, God definitely used him in such a mighty way. And my parents even continued just to, they never gave up on me. You know, mm -hmm. my parents, no matter what the situation was, I mean, my dad, <laughs> I remember this one time, like my dad dropped me off at the mall, you know, in high school, you know, you want to go hang out with your friends. Oh, yeah. And so he dropped me off <laughs> at the mall. He just happened to do like a turn just to like, like see and I told him I was going to the mall but me and my boys we were at the metro station um and we were smoking and he oh, sees us no. he grabs me by my neck in front of my friends like and just starts yanking me back to the car <laughs> and I was like I was so embarrassed yeah. and we'll laugh about it now but like I mean at the moment I was like I hate this like this sucks so bad yeah. but I mean my dad never gave up on me no matter what I was doing my parents have always loved me through it and um and it's it, I mean really it's you don't notice it until you get older and that's it's, it's kind of sad when I think about it because I, I feel like I lost some of those years um but now I can make up for them you know what I'm saying and yeah. so in college um after having that conversation with my coach you know I was focused on college got into Liberty University um and so getting there was such a you know I was going to wrestle there and then they cut the team the wrestling team my freshman year so I felt like God used the wrestling team to get me there and then that he cut the team, so I was only going to be focused on him and not okay. sports. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like when yep. you're a D1 athlete, like your your focus is going to be on practice mm -hmm. and tournaments. And um, the team was cut, and I was like, well, I'm not going to wrestle for free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Nope>. But uh, <laughs> but I, I stayed there, you know. But it wasn't easy um, going from Northern Virginia to Liberty. It was a culture shock for me, and I wanted to leave my 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 first semester. I called my mom. I was like, yo, this place is not for me. I need to get up out of here. She's <laughs> like, no, like you need to finish it out. And so I mean, everything was a God thing when I think about it, and not just in a generic corny way of saying oh this was god no like when i look back like that's exactly what i needed i needed to be in a new environment i needed to be in a place where they were going to super saturate me with scripture mm -hmm. super saturate me with theology these bible classes um creation studies uh philosophy classes i mean all these things that were just pouring into me and i've always had biblical knowledge because i grew up in the church and i even led at my church and so it wasn't that i didn't have biblical knowledge but i didn't have a lot of practicals to to tie it alongside it and so in college i started to take my faith to the next level um, and I started to apply what I was learning all those years into yeah. my life and put it into practice. And so I got involved with um, with the Southern Baptist uh, Convention with NAM. And so they flew me out to states a couple summers to do um, inner city evangelism. Um, and so that was amazing. So I spent three yeah. months in uh, Section 8 neighborhoods um, and just pouring out um, like what real, what, you know, what the gospel looks like, like living it out for like three months with, with people. We had some crazy stories. I mean, some crazy I stories. Bet. I mean, I remember just, to, just cause we're on the topic. I remember the, I got in Florida and it was our first week and I was the, I was the driver. I guess I was the most responsible one. I don't know. Yikes. Um, <laughs> which definitely my boy Julius <laughs> was the most responsible, but, um, they, uh, they, they gave me the keys. And so I locked the keys in the car the first week. Oh no. <laughs> and we're in the middle of this neighborhood and I look around and I'm like, look, I know one of y'all cats can get up in this car and i need you to do it like please <laughs> and so like we just bonded over like the craziest things right i just remember that was just like our introduction and um well their introduction to us it's like oh you guys are a little different <laughs> you guys aren't like the normal ones like nah like bro we we about this life too and so uh <laughs> give me that co hanger <laughs> but no like i mean it was just so dope how god just used so many things in my life to like be able to be like hey listen i gave you this past that you can relate right i gave you this past that you can now live it out in a different way and and you know and now it's just so awesome and so in college there was instances such as that like working with nam was so huge for me um and it just matured me and then there was a group called bridging the gap urban ministries and there was a brotherhood there uh, called dfc disciples for christ and that was one of the other things i got to meet people um 
at Liberty who were just like me. And it was just, it was refreshing. I mean, it was exactly what I needed. Yeah. God used those brothers in my life to, um, to help establish um, who I was and my identity and being comfortable with having a past and still living for Christ and not feeling ashamed. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the, the hardest things, um, especially going to Christian universities, having a past that nobody else can relate to. I can't even imagine. You know, yeah. you always feel less than. You feel like, oh, I'm the dirty Christian or I'm, I'm the one that like people are gonna judge or look at different mm -hmm. um, and not just because of skin color. And so a lot of those things um, deeply impacted my faith. And so having um, a brotherhood that could relate and we could grow together and live it out is so, it was so important. Yeah. And so graduating Liberty, I mean, I was like, I was ready to take on the world, you know, <laughs> That's awesome. um, um, I mean, but it was so cool to, to be able to um, just see how like my anger and my identity was so lost. And I was blaming God and blaming my parents and really I was blaming anybody who was um, coming against me, like bullies and all these things. But I really didn't understand who God was to me personally. And right. like you were saying last week, I'm beautiful. I'm a beautiful creation made by God. It sounds weird to say that I'm a God, but I'm a beautiful creation made by God. And I didn't believe that for like more than half of my life. Wow. And when you don't believe that you're made on purpose and for a purpose, you act out because you feel like you feel like you're lacking. So you're making up for that lacking. Trying to fill that void. Exactly. With something else. I was like, yo, God made a mistake with me. Right. Like, um, nobody wants to tell somebody their birth mother is a prostitute i mean that just has so that brought me down for years mm -hmm. um i didn't know how to i didn't even know how to like talk about it mm -hmm. i didn't know how to feel about it i was born with drugs in my body i didn't know like what the repercussions were what are my kids going to deal with i mean these are things that i still have to battle with and consider and to make sure that i'm you know replacing those lies that that the devil is telling me in my mind that i'm not good enough that i am broken that i can't trust people and all these things that i had to battle with in every relationship i've been in i had to replace all those lies with the truth yeah. of the gospel yeah and so um i mean i don't know what your life verse is um if you guys are in the chat but my life verse is, is isaiah 40 31 um and I needed something to cling on to. And it says, for those who trust in the Lord, I've always battled with trusting people and trusting God. So when I read that, the first part, I was like, yo, this is for me. Like, I need this. Um, and it says, for those who trust in the Lord, he shall strengthen them. I needed that strength. Mm -hmm. They should rise high on wings like eagles. I'm like, I want to soar above all of these problems, above all these issues that I'm battling with. Um, and it says, for, for those who trust in the Lord, he shall, they shall strengthen them. They shall rise high on wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. And they shall walk and not be faint. And so you ever seen that picture? of like um the footsteps right and it's like two uh -huh. and then there's one and, and they're like the well that was when hand. god carried me yeah. um and so that is how i picture that verse is like god has carried me through so much of my life and you know in those moments you're like god where are you and he was like look i was holding you back from all these other things when i look back at my life i could see all these different turns that i could have made but god allowed me just to go just so far like he didn't let me go all the way he didn't let me completely um mess my life up just because of my anger and just because of my sin mm -hmm. and so there there was a point where i had to um apologize to my parents you know and and really um come come to god and say listen god i'm i'm, I'm sorry you uh you were not the blame i had to battle with these things thank you for forgiving me there's there's there was so much grace that he's just had over my life and that's why i get excited about talking to people about the grace of god yeah um it's not so that you can continue in sin no but it's so that you can understand that you can come just as you are you don't have to be a certain type of person um and that's why i was excited about this series because we are saved right but we still have to battle with things this is not an easy fight nobody said it was going to be an easy fight but we can live in freedom and that is what we live in we live in freedom we don't live in habitual sin we do still struggle with sin though um, and so if you are living um, in a point right now and you feel like you're in a place of habitual sin, then let us encourage you today. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay there. Matter no. of fact, don't stay there. No. Matter of fact, in Jesus name, we're not going to let you like, listen, pray no. right now in Jesus name that God will set you free from whatever you're dealing with, whatever sin it is. It may be anger, maybe body image issues, whatever the case is. I pray right now in Jesus name that you are set free from that. Amen. And if you would like materials, if you would like us to pray for you, if you would like a counselor to come beside you we have all that here at liberty we are here to come beside you um so please send me an email send jenny an email if you would like to chat with her um if you would like to like to get any materials on how to deal with anger how to deal with those things and please send me an email at jmason at liberty live dot church mm -hmm. and if you would like any uh, materials on how to deal with body image issues then please send an email to jenny and hers is jay ward at liberty live dot church yep. we are here for you that's why we're here yeah no other reason it's to just minister to y'all. So. so we're, I mean, thank you. Uh, 
<laughs> and if you would like to chat, I mean, I have stories for days. If you would ever like to chat or if you could relate and you just want to grab some coffee with me, I would be more than happy yeah. to. I'd be more than happy to. Um, you yeah, guys I was going to try to wrap it up with you and be like, so, you know, what's some practical things we can do today? But you yeah. really, like, covered the whole thing. You told your whole story. So that was awesome. Yeah, that was still in the bridge version because we'd be here for, like, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the five-hour version, email JD, schedule that coffee date. Now nah, I'm going to make a movie one day. <laughs> yeah. um, but, no, um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. And next yes. week we're going to be back with a third episode. And so you guys tell your friends, share this video, tell somebody to get excited for next week. What time are we going to be here, Jenny, next week? 7 o'clock on the dot, 7 p.m. 7 o'clock. And that's yep. going to be every Wednesday. We yep. are going to be here with new episodes. Um, so thank you for joining us. Yeah. If you would like uh, to, to if, you, if you have questions about who Jesus is, if you have questions about maybe a next step in baptism or maybe joining a group, then please send me an email at jmason at libertylive.church. I would love to connect you with a pastor, with a counselor, or with your next step. You guys have a great week.